Just a Sorrow here and I'm back with another video. So today's video is going to be about helpful student resources that I've come across uh, during my time in medical school as well as during my college years. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked about some helpful resources and ways that I study as well as what apps do I use on my phone, um, laptop, and iPad when it comes to school. So I figured instead of responding to you guys individually, I'd give you guys a video showing you just that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into things, shall we? So as you guys know, I tend to use my Apple laptop, which is a MacBook Pro. I use my iPad and my phone. Uh, these are usually the things that I use when it comes to studying. So let's go ahead and start with my laptop. So uh, the first resource that I want to talk about is the thing that I use to stay organized and on task when it comes to studying. And that is none other than the Cram Fighter app. I use this to keep all of my study schedules in one place. So third year, you study for more than one shelf at my school. Um, so I'll have to keep track of the things I'm studying for internal medicine as well as for psychiatry and neurology. Uh, so what's really helpful about this app is that you can create uh, your own study blocks and can set the dates for which exams that you're trying to study for. Um, so here I already have a prep block set um, and I'll just go ahead and change the dates here so I can go ahead and show you guys uh, what it might look like to create a sample study schedule. So now as I'm getting the study block scheduled, I can go ahead and show you the coolest part of this, which is the fact that you can find the resources that you may be using. Um, they have a lot of books that are related to the medical field already auto-populated into their data bank. So you can choose from different editions and different subtopics of a lot of the more popular medical books and it already has the page numbers the chapters and how many pages the entire book is already auto populated into their system so this is super helpful because if you want to go over only certain chapters or go over the chapters in a certain order you're able to go ahead and set that within the app So now that I have first aid selected onto my resource list, I'll auto populate that into my bank and I can go ahead and start searching and adding other resources to my study selection. So a really cool thing about this is the fact that it knows how many pages, how many flashcards, how many questions um, may be in any of the resources that you're using and it will break that down by how many hours uh, in the day that you have when you set your study schedule and you'll be able to do that accordingly. Another cool feature is that you can create custom resources. For instance here I was searching for flashcards and I didn't really see the ones I wanted so I just labeled it personal flashcards entered in how many I have in my flashcard deck and then I'll have that in on my custom resources list and I'll be able to incorporate 183 flashcards into my study day. So you can set your different amount of hours for each resource, whether it's reading a book, doing flashcards or questions. And when you go to calculate your schedule, it'll take into consideration all the page numbers and the questions and any other resources that you have on your list, in addition to how much time you have to study for your exam. Then it'll break it down to basically telling you this is what you need to do in each day to get your life together and to complete the task at hand. So really cool and I always love that app. So in addition to how I managed to set a study schedule, you guys are always asking me about what I use to take notes. So on my laptop, I have this great software called PDF Element Express. And with this software, I'm able to import all of my class notes and after I do that I'm able to then digitally take notes on these documents during my lecture in real time. So I'm able to add and edit the document as I see fit with additional notes or if I want to highlight, mark through, add some additional diagrams or images or maybe a hot link to an up-to-date page I'm able to add all of that in real time during my lectures. And here you'll see me 
adding a little note for myself because I tend to space out sometimes if I'm not actively note taking so I had to leave myself a reminder. This is super helpful for me because as a medical student there are just way too many lectures and entirely too many PowerPoints for me to be able to keep up with things if I'm taking notes by hand. So at this point in time I have to take notes on my laptop or my iPad so this PDF Element Express has allowed me to take digital notes seamlessly during lecture. As you can see, as I was clicking through the sidebar, there are a lot of different functions within this, but honestly, the editing function alone makes this a great resource for students to have because it just lets you take really great digital notes. And honestly, I didn't start doing that until medical school, and I've been truly converted to always taking digital notes, and that's something that I wish I started doing in undergrad. So definitely figure out some way to take notes digitally because it's definitely a huge time saver. So the next resource that I have is content related. So this is Lecturio, which is a website that has both lectures as well as question banks and study guides, which are super helpful to have when it comes to studying anything pre-med or medical related, because there's a ton of literature out there and things are always changing. So it's great that this is a digital resource that is always up to date. As you can see here, there's a ton of content that is geared towards both the medical contents for first through third year, as well as pre-medical topics such as biochemistry, uh, organic chemistry, and things like that. So you're able to find video lectures, which you can watch, um, as well as quiz questions to help solidify the learning that you've done through these videos. I think one of the greatest parts of this resource is the fact that the curriculum itself is learner dependent. It really can show you the areas of your weakness which allows you to go back and relearn or pay more attention to certain topics. In addition, the cue banks are also geared towards learners by saying, okay, if you started to get these questions wrong, then it might bring back up those same kind of topics in order to help you learn. Arguably my most favorite resource throughout all of med school would be MedBullets. This served as my Google for med students. I would type in a question into Google and I'd say diabetes, genetics, breakdown, MedBullets. And it would literally link me to this page and I would be able to learn and figure out my question as well as practice some of the high yield topics that are related to that. So here you can see in the endocrine section, uh, you're able to see the breakdown of what the highest yield topics are. It'll give you an introduction, let you know a little bit about the disease process, as well as give you some questions at the end that make sure that you took the big takeaways uh, from what's important from that topic. I really love this resource because it not only gave you the information that you needed about the topic that you searched, but it also gave you great questions that were case-based to really drive home those key points and high-yield topics. A new feature that they added, maybe while I was step studying, I'm not really sure, but it was the breakdown of the site between step one and step two. So the step one site is for first and second years, so it'll be kind of like this format. And the step two version is a little more clinically focused, which basically means more case-based presentations, more focus on the treatment and the management of any of the disease processes that are also listed on the step one site, because each exam looks at each question and the topics in a slightly different manner. So I really do like the fact that they added this breakdown on the site. So that's pretty much all that I use on my laptop. So let's go ahead and move on to my cell phone. I'm not gonna lie, I don't use my cell phone as much as I did first and second year, now that I'm on, in the clinic and on the wards. 
but there are some apps that I really can't let go of. Sleep Cycle is one of them. So this app basically gets you the greatest night's sleep ever. I use this during my surgery rotations because I was only averaging maybe five hours of sleep. And this will wake you up feeling so rested no matter how much or how little sleep you get because it wakes you up in between your sleep cycles and not in the middle of one. It also has some cool functions like uh, water waves and other sounds that you can use to sleep. Uh, but I mainly use it because it just makes me feel amazing off of four or five hours of sleep. The next app that I have is Apocrates. I was told about this app while I was in a family medicine clinic, I believe. And it's really helpful when you want to look up drugs and and their dosages as well as other treatment plans. Uh, we always try to have evidence-based medicine, so Hippocrates kind of gives you all of that at your fingertips. And I have the Cram Fighter app on my phone because I set my schedule on my laptop and I use the app on my phone as my daily checklist. As you can see, I cannot recommend this app enough. Next. I love my Google Calendar because it literally keeps me productive, which is why it's under the productivity folder. I would be nothing without my Google Calendar schedule, and I don't know how I live with only AOL email. And lastly would be the Essential Anatomy app. I've had this since first year, and it's been super helpful now that I'm in the clinic and on the hospital floors because I'll be able to look up some anatomical questions that might be related to my patient's case because you never know when someone will ask you an anatomy question because it needs to always be fresh in your mind. And that's pretty much it for my phone. Um, there are a few things that I use on my iPad that I'll go ahead and point out now. There are some clinic specific apps that I was told to download, um, kind of the same apps that I have on my cell phone as well. But the Notability app is what I use to take notes when I'm using my iPad. I love it. I've used it a lot and it serves me well. Um, another thing that I always use my iPad for, for would be my question bank. My question bank of choice was always UWorld because it was the best. I would always recommend this to medical students, but now UWorld also has an MCAT version that is geared towards pre-med students. And now they're giving out free trial accesses. And I think all med students know about UWorld as the holy grail. So you pre-med students should definitely check it out for your MCAT study. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and also leave me some messages down below telling me what resources that you guys like to use because we all can learn from each other. Um, so I'll see you guys in my next video. I have a lot of things in store. Uh, so be on the lookout over the next couple of weeks. So bye.